Hey there, it's, this is Math 8, Unit 1, Lesson 6, Describing Transformations. Can I continue along with the same topic here? And so we're going to take some polygons and we're going to transform them in the coordinate planes. That means we're going to be moving them around on a piece of grid paper of some sort. And so you began today's lesson with a couple shapes and I want you to, it says, Andre performs a 90 degree counterclockwise. We're going to go this way, 90 degrees, that much, rotation. A polygon P and gets polygon P prime but he does not say what the center rotation is can you find the center so the center rotation means at what point are we spinning this shape around to make it go this direction 90 degrees okay so what you might have done is maybe played with the shape a little bit and done some done some sketching with your partners or your classmates whatever so what it would look like was something along these lines what we're trying to do is take this shape and we're trying to rotate it till it gets over there that's our idea is rotating this shape 90 degrees so that it moves over there that 90 degree part if you think about it means means i need this line so instead of facing this way i need it to go that way because that would be a 90 degree but not only is it 90 degrees there it has to go up over there so what we look, what you're looking for is, you know, you're looking for a point that you could put your pencil on. Let's just pretend I'm going to put a pencil right here, and I can pivot around until it matches. Well, in this case here, it doesn't quite match. But as I move the pencil around, if I move different points, if I was to go here, for example, and if I pivot there, I'm a little bit too high. I shot a little bit too high. So if I slide over a little bit more, maybe one more point here, I go there, and they match up nicely, don't they? So by finding the right point on this grid, I can find what my center point would be for where I can rotate this shape 90 degrees. And one of the key things from this lesson that you learned was that when you find two points that are, that are kind of matching points, right? Coordinating points, we can call this point A prime. We can call this one A. You look for points that are the same distance away from the center to be able to figure out what the center is going to be. So in this case here, these two matching points or coordinating points are both two units away from our center point. See, this one didn't work because they're not the same distance apart. So you're going to find something that, that kind of matches. So where are they the same distance apart? It takes a bit to find that sometimes, but we'd say, oh, there's our center point and it's going to rotate there. And there's our 90 degree turn. Because again, we're going 90 degrees, there's 90, and I pivot 90 degrees, looking good. So that was part of what you did as your warm up this morning for units uh, lesson six. And then you spent some time with your partners looking at some transformations. And they gave you some information about some different shapes and asked you to move them around, describing which way they were gonna go, whether it was a couple of units up or left or right or rotate. The summary of the lesson for today is simply this. The center of a rotation for a figure doesn't have to be one of the points of the figure. To find the center rotation, look for a point that is the same distance from two corresponding points, like we just saw. saw. You will probably have to do this for a couple of different pairs of corresponding points to nail it down. That means it won't just be the first one you find. You might have to look around a little bit for that. But the other key thing with this lesson here is that when we perform a sequence of transformations, the order of the transformations can be important. So the order can be important when you have more than one thing. If I have step one followed by step two and I'm doing lots of things, the order in which I do those things actually does matter because it's going to have an impact on what's going to take place. So for example, they have this picture here. You have a triangle. They give you a triangle here in your summary. You have A, B, and C. What I do with this shape and the order in which I do it has an impact on what's going to take place. If I'm gonna to try to get that shape to line up right here on top of that shape, then there's probably a sequence of steps I wanna take in order for that to happen, right? So if, if it says like in your notes, the triangle ABC is translated up two units and then reflected over the X axis, that means I'm gonna move it up one, two units, there's that part, and then I'm gonna reflect it over the X axis like so, so I can line it up with my other triangle. That works great. However, if I do things in a different direction, right? let's say I start here and I say, well, let me reflect it first over maybe point C. Okay, so I reflect it. 
Power point C. Yeah, it'll quite reflect there, does it? Right? And then try to move it up to. I end up with a shape that then looks like, or a new shape that looks like this. A little bit tricky to see there. So I have one and I have a crisscross, almost like an X. If you look on the next page, you'll see what I'm talking about. Right, so if I take this one here and I and I go the same idea, but now I reflect over the x-axis first, and then I go up two, I end up with something a little bit different, don't I? I end up with a different looking shape because the order does matter. All right, so pay attention to an order when you have a sequence of events there. Looking at today's lesson or today's homework assignment, it said that we have a trapezoid, trapezoid A, and it wants you to do some things with it. It asks, it's asking you first of all to go ahead and move it. A, draw polygon B, the image of A, using the y-axis as a line of reflection. So here's our y-axis once again, and so we're going to reflect that shape over this line here. And so to do that, I'm going to find the corresponding points. I'm going to go 1, 2 here, and go 1, 2 over to match. I notice this one's up and over 2, so my first line is here, matching that one. It's gonna be two long, so one, two there. We're up one, two, three high, so one, two, three high. And we mark that there. And then we connect our dots right here. And that becomes shape B. For letter B, it says draw polygon C, the image of B, using the x-axis as a line of reflection. So now, I'm gonna use the x-axis as the line of reflection, meaning we're gonna flip it over this guy right there this time. So, I'm gonna take B, follow those directions there, be careful so that you're following. I'm making number letter C, but I'm using image B. So I'm gonna use this one, and I want to flip it over that one. Again, if you wanted to use some patty paper, you certainly could. You could sketch that like so, and then you could fold it and see, well, what's it gonna look like? Oh, we're gonna land over here. It's gonna look something like that. So that again, I'm one away from the x-axis, so I go one away there. I go one away right here. I know I'm two units long, so I go one, two. I know here I'm three, one, two, three units long. And then I get to connect my dots, connect my dots, connect my dots, connect my dots. And now I have polygon C, looking good. Now to do polygon D, Polygon D, it tells us, is the image of C, so this one, and I'm gonna use the x-axis as the line of reflection. So what are they saying? Well, take this shape here, right there, C, and now let's use this as the line of reflection, which means, oh, we're just going back to where we were. So Polygon D is right on top of Polygon B, it's the same thing. So I don't know how you wanna draw that necessarily, but I just use a little different color. You draw on the inside, and so polygon D is actually the same one as polygon B. They are the same in the same spot. Okay. How are we doing so far? Let's take a look at the next one, number two. For number two, it says that the point negative four comma one is rotated 180 degrees counterclockwise using negative three comma zero. What are the coordinates of the image? Okay. So we have a point that we're gonna be rotating around a different center, all right? And it might be helpful if you were to actually take a look at a coordinate grid paper. So let's take a look here. Let's say we use this grid up here. Negative four comma one uh, comma one is right here on our grid paper, okay? Looking at our previous one. So let's say we're gonna use that point right there. What they're asking us to do is to take that point, three comma, negative four comma, negative one. So we're going over there, up one. And we wanna rotate that point around, what did it say? Negative three comma zero. And we wanna go 180 degrees. So we're gonna rotate around there. So 180 degrees in terms of a line means we're gonna, we're gonna be doing this thing until we get a nice line back. So here's a line, and I wanna get that same line on that line. So as I rotate, I'm gonna aim for this, for this line to spin around counterclockwise, which is this way, until the line is back on the axis. Because it started on the axis, I'm gonna get it back on the axis. So I'll put my pencil here, and I'm gonna rotate it around. 
until my line that I sketched is back on the line. That's 180 degrees, see my arrow? I went 180 degrees counterclockwise, and now I look to see where is my point at, and I'm at negative two and negative one. I'm right here at this point right there because I rotated around this one, this point right here. Okay, so in terms of a, of a solution, we could say the solution is C, but what we wanna look at as well is that, look at the distance, if you would, from the center rotation. Notice that they are the same distance away. I'm one unit away this way, and one unit away this way to get that center of rotation right there. That becomes my center. So there might have been a shortcut way of doing that. And you can kind of take a look and think, huh, what could that have been? And maybe you'll figure that out on your own. Okay, letter B, or number three, sorry. Describe the sequence of transformations for which triangle B is the image of triangle A. How do we be, let triangle B become the image of triangle A? So the, what they're asking is, how do you, how do you go from a, we'll just sketch this out here. How do you make A turn into B? All right, so if I take a little piece of patty paper there, I'm thinking I gotta go from here and move this guy all the way over to there. Well, I can see that just a, tr a, a translation sliding it and up and down isn't gonna work. I'm gonna have to do some sort of reflection in order to make that work. So I'm gonna go ahead, since we've been talking about things, and I would say step one, I would say step one, is I'm gonna to wanna to say, let's reflect over the Y axis. That's gonna allow me to take this shape, reflect it over here. We can see I'm one point away. So I'm gonna reflect it, I'm gonna move it over to, reflect it over here. So now I've reflected this image from there to there. That's all I've done so far. Once I reflect it, I can now try to line up the points. I'm aiming for that point to get to right there. So I'm gonna have to go, looking at my grid here, up two, and then I'm gonna go over one, two. So let's see if I do that right. I'm gonna go up two, and then over two, and now I'm lined up there. So in terms of my next step, I'm gonna go up two units, and then I'm gonna go right two units. This is all part of this one, not, not four. So that's my idea there. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna reflect it over, and I'm gonna go up two, one, two, and then over two to get to where I need to be. But again, that sequence is important for what I'm trying to do. Could you do a different way? There probably is, this is just one way of getting there. There are other ways you could have gotten there, and that's okay too. Let number four. Our last one for the day. It says here's quadrilateral ABCD. It says draw the image of quadrilateral ABCD after each transformation. So you can take the translation that takes B to D. Okay? So let's let's do this here together. What we're saying is we're gonna take the shape. And here's our shape. We're gonna just sketch it out real quick. So here's our initial shape, A, B, C, D. And our translation that takes A to B, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one, let's do this in our pink, or B to D, sorry. We're gonna move the whole shape over to here. So that's the translation. So if I was to draw that one out, I'm gonna put a dot there, I'm gonna put a dot right about there, put another dot right about, looks like about there, okay. And so this one, would be something like this. Okay, so that's A, what we're doing there. If I wanted to, letter B, the reflection over segment BC. That means I'm gonna use BC as like my reflection line. All right, that's my line of reflection. And I'm gonna take my initial one, and I'm not sure if we're doing the initial one, Draw the image of the quadrilateral ABC after each transformation. Okay, so um, I'm not sure if they want you to continue with this one and reflect that over BC, or if they want you to go back. I'm gonna go ahead and just go back for now, okay? Um, let's just do that. 
I'm gonna go ahead and ro do that. I'm gonna go ahead and reflect this one over line BC. So we're gonna take it from there and we reflect it over, whoops, let's just do it like this, be easier. Reflect it like this, so we end up with a shape like that. Okay, if that's my line of reflection. So again, doing this here on my paper, get my pencil out there. I'm gonna have a point here and a point here. And we're gonna play connect the dots here, here, and here. So this is what we're doing. We're saying we're gonna reflect over BC. I end up with this shape right there. If what they were wanting to do instead was more than that, if what they were saying was take your, your second shape and reflect that over B, B, D right here, B, C, okay? That would mean we'd be folding it on this line. And if that was the case, we would then fold this whole shape right here like so. And your shape would be way down there. I'm not sure if that's what they're wanting or not. I, I really just can't tell. I mean, I think we're doing one at a time based upon the original, but it could be they want you to just can't keep moving it around. If that's the case, then it ends up down there. So that's a possibility. I'm gonna go ahead just real quick and sketch that because it could be that that's what they're wanting you to do. So you could have had something like this, this, and this, but I'm not sure. Finally then, let's look at the last one. C, the rotation about point A by angle DAB. All right, so we're gonna go about around point A. We're gonna rotate around A by the angle measurement of DAB. Well, DAB, is that degrees I may not know what that is and I don't have to really measure it I could take a look and say well I know that whatever it is it's gonna be the same amount so I want to rotate it this amount no matter what okay and I'm gonna go what does it say counterclockwise so we're gonna go counterclockwise so we're gonna rotate it this amount here to become the same angle there and we're gonna rotate it by the same amount that it is. So I put my point on A and we're going to rotate it by the same degree which means I'm just going to wait till it snaps in place and I'm right there. So I have something that looks like this I think. So I'm going to put a point, put a point and we're going to connect the dots for this one and we're there Oops. and we are here and here so we rotated it counterclockwise by that same angle measurement so this angle matches that angle i think we're going to be okay there so that's what i did there hopefully that's about right again if you're not sure check in with your teacher as always they are your experts and they'll help you out so hopefully you have a great day and good luck with everything else